You're welcome on Off the Press, the program where we unbundle the day's newspapers. And uh, we're joined today by Omash Ladeji. Thanks for joining us today. Good morning. Thank you for having me. All right. The first paper we'll be taking a look at this morning is The Punch. And the headline story here says, Further petrol price hike likely. Marketers warn Nigerians. And it then goes on to say, TUC says, Government action wicked demands immediate reversal. We can no longer fund petrol subsidies, says federal government. And uh, the, the punch also has the story of uh, international flights saying FG bans Air France, KLM, others approve 14 airlines. On page 27 of the punch, we see that PTF approves phased reopening of schools, orders risk assessment. 17 vigilantes killed, 23 bandits gunned down in Niger others and water bill hearing SEN's others warn reps against illegality there's also some big stories here on the upcoming Edo elections uh, it says APC PDP trade words over alleged 1.5 billion naira vote buying cash now that's a lot of money is a Yamo tackles sexual violence supports survivors and that's according to a story there by his wife and PDP group Hail Benin Monarch for peace meeting. And uh, down on the Punch newspaper, there's a story here about the convicted Kano musician. We see he's appealing his death sentence. And uh, APC affirms Abiru Obafemi as Lagos by elections candidate. We we'll also see the story here on uh, an issue we thought uh, has been resolved. Uni unions appear as Unilag panel grills Babalaki for four hours. So again, uh, let us know which of the stories you like us to highlight this morning. Well, um, if I may speak on the issue of um, petroleum subsidy remover, since um, it's a burning issue and very important to Nigerians. Well, for me, I think it is very um, bad, very satanic, very wicked, that at this point in time, when um, Nigerians are suffering, um, government is supposed to ease the pain of the people. But um, um, I think we are so unfortunate to be Nigerians because um, successive government, um, what they seem to know how to do best is to add to the pain of the people. I don't know whether that gives them joy because um, there's a global trend right now whereby government are assisting the citizens, government are easing their pains. But in Nigeria, we have this um, increase in um, VAT, value added tax. Now we have um, electricity increase, um, electricity tariff increase, and almost immediately you have this petroleum, you know, um, price increase as well. So you begin to imagine that okay, don't we have any um, reserve at all? Don't we plan at all? Don't government feel the pulse of the people? Must we come up with all these wicked policies to just make life miserable for Nigerians? If you cannot help Nigerians for their life to become better, why not try and just leave them how they are? At least for now, you should you should you should have some pity if you are in government, you know. And this is the same government that criticized past government. The president himself contested so many times, and at a point in time in 2011, he was crying that give me this power. Please, these people are doing this thing wrong. I can do it better. Believe in me. The first time Nigeria said, no, 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 we don't trust you. You truncated, you know, um, um, uh, uh, a democratic government, so we cannot now bring you into our democracy. The second time Nigeria also said no. The third time Nigeria also said no. And it was crying like a baby on hair. And right now, in, in, in Nigeria, said, okay, take this power. Now, for somebody that has been criticizing past government, I must say that it's not that past government are doing it right. No, they are not. But you would have expected that for somebody that has promised change, the, two, the 12 years that the president was a serial contestant, that he would have known what he wants to do, he would have known the plan, he would have known how to resolve the problem. Unfortunately, when he gets the power now, things are going from bad to worse. Nigerians are going into poverty more and more. Now, this uh, petroleum subsidy removal has become food for the boys, deregulate the 
petroleum sector sincerely, but you say you are deregulating. It is your government that is still fixing the price. That should not be the case. It should be a perfect competitive market. Government should just create policies that will enable things to go right. Not that you will say you are deregulating and you are still having influence on determining the price. It's just like our federalism. We are like a unitary state and we are saying we are practicing federalism. Who are we deceiving? We don't have to deceive ourselves. So I think it is wicked, it is satanic, it is barbaric for government at this point in time where people are losing their jobs, where Nigerians are going in pain for any government, any government to come up with increasing petroleum um, price, increasing electricity tariff, into increasing value. Why is it that government knows no means of um, maintaining itself, generating income, than to pass the body to the people? Where is the abasha loot? The millions of dollars, millions of dollars, where are they? Where is the money that custom is generating? Federal um, Inland Revenue Service, where is the money they are generating? This is a question we need to ask us. Immigration, where is the money they are generating? The money that they have borrowed from China. And now, as it stands now, every Nigerian citizen is owing a Chinese is only the Chinese government because if you look at the money they are borrowing and if you split it, you will find that you yourself in the studio, each one of you are owing Chinese government because it is our generation that will pay the money. So why is government like that? Why should you remove the price of petroleum and um, increase the price of petroleum now when you know that marketers, um, transporters, they always take advantage of increasing petroleum price to increase the price of transport fare. Now, let's, uh, let's imagine that somebody is collecting 30,000 naira minimum wage, and the person is using like maybe 70,000 on transport before. Now, this will have a direct effect on the person, because at the end of the day, the person might be sending maybe 10 to 12,000 naira. Indeed, no indeed, Deji, but we have to move on no. now to several other papers. Uh, let's check out The Nation. I, it seems that story still is a headliner here. Anger grows as government's defense, patrol, and power rates increase, and market forces now determine prices, tariffs, Senate may reconvene. There's still the issue here of Air France, Lufthansa, and, uh, and uh, others, bad, and foreign flights uh, are back on Saturday. We also see here that uh, the Edo and Ondo elections are making headlines. George Redrews redraws suits against Ize Yamo. PDP promises to restore Bini's master plan and uh, PDP saying uh, candidates not pursuing uh, a career agenda. And still on the nation, Lagos Ogun seek Buhari's nod to fix Lagos Otta, Abeokuta Road. And uh, government lifts restriction on markets and stores. So which of the stories here would you like to touch on uh, very quickly? Well, if I'm to touch on another important story is the resumption of um, international flight. Well, I think um, if government is to resume, to resume the international flight, there should be proper planning and there should be sincerity. Now, if the um, international flight is resumed and there's no proper planning, Nigeria at the end of the day may have itself to play. And now, from the look of things, you know, um, Nigerian government is broke. So if they resume the international flight, and people unintentionally come into the country with the coronavirus. Definitely, it will have a serious impact on the country. And it's like the coronavirus, when they just import it into Nigeria, it used to have strong effects. Because now, in Africa as a whole, the, the, the effect of the coronavirus is not, is not as much as that of other continents. So now that we've been able to manage it, now that I can say God is with us on this pandemic, now that coronavirus has chosen to be fair and kind on us, knowing our situation that we don't have um, proper electricity and proper healthcare system, I think we shouldn't abuse that opportunity. If we are to reopen the airport, we should make sure there is proper planning in place. We shouldn't just reopen the airport for the sake of just reopening it. No, we have to be very careful so that at the end of the day, we don't have ourselves to blame. Then, I'm, then I must speak about the airport officials. Now, 
most Nigerians, if they find themselves in power, they lack patriotism. If you visited the airport to and fro, you will see that most of those airport officials, what they are after is always their pocket. You don't see immigration officials in other parts of the world behave the way Nigerian immigration behaves, the way Nigerian airport officials behave. When you land, what they are after is how they are going to expert and extort you. They are not after the real job itself. I was to board a flight out of Nigeria one day and a Chinese man was in front of me and the official was telling the Chinese man, what do you have for me? And I felt embarrassed. And I, and I felt like correcting the man. I even felt like giving him something from my pocket. That, Don't do this. You are embarrassing the country. But at the end of the day, I thought of it that if I'm to give him, it will be a waste of money because it will still do it to the next person. So government has to put some measures in place to make sure that the officials at the airport do not sabotage the system. Right. We must not abuse the opportunity of the low rate of infection, and we need to be very careful and sincere with ourselves. All right, thank you uh, for, for that opinion, uh, Deji. Let's now go to the Guardian newspaper. Uh, the story about the, uh, uh, there's a story here saying NLC and the TUC plan total strike against price fuel, uh, fuel price hike and uh, more knocks for government over new tariffs. And we see that senators plan protests and emergency session. And more stories here on The Guardian. It says lockdown claims 1.8 trillion naira as Nigeria suffers three straight quarterly losses. Still on COVID-19, the PTF says COVID-19 curfew now 12 midnight to 4 a.m. And in Katsina, police kill 15 bandits, arrests 50, recover 10 rifles in Kaduna. And here also on The Guardian on page 5, group NSIA unveil fund for post-COVID-19 era targets $50 million. So which of the stories on COVID-19 would you like to, to, to talk about very briefly before we move on to the Sun newspaper this morning? Well, on the um, PDM, PTF um, curfew that has been relaxed for, um, from now 12 midnight to 4 a.m., I think um, that is okay because if you look at it across the country, the curfew has not really been that effective. Um, it has really just been um, a means of extortion whereby you see um, policemen, you know, um, looking at the time, and when um, the coffee time eats the clock, then they begin to um, extort the motorists. So I think um, it's good that government has relaxed the cover. And if you look at some um, cities like Lagos, the traffic situation, if it holds you down, and at the end of the day, you unintentionally, um, you are unable to reach your destination, unintentionally instead of the security agency to be reasonable with you they tend to extort you so i think it is good that the curfew is um relaxed by the ptf mm. and how about this issue of uh, the lockdown claiming 1.8 trillion naira uh, talking about the nigeria's economy here and losses you know with regard to the lockdown and all of that well um it's a global thing and Every economy in the world is um, affected. So, if one point um, something trillion era as um, the, the defect is on the on the Nigerian economy, I won't say that is a lie. But the problem is that we are sowing what we reap. Now, nations across the world have been able to keep their economy flowing, have been able to feed their citizens because they have reserves. But our in our own case, what we know how to do is to spend and spend. We have this habit of spend it all. Tomorrow we take care of itself. And that is what is affecting the economy now. Now, government has been unable to bail out any, um, any um, sector at all. Look at all these um, um, small and medium scale enterprise. Many of them are, you know, packing up. People are losing their jobs. No incentives at all. So I think that we need to learn from this and imbibe the culture of saving, saving for 
the raining day so that when situations like this occur, we can just dip our hand into our reserves, into our post, and use it to solve the situation. So I think that this is a lesson for us. That is if we choose to learn from it. Mm. And on the Daily Sun newspaper, the issue of security is very apparent here. As we see here, Boko Ram, most towns no-go area. And that's uh, the Boni speaker lamenting, saying most towns are no-go areas in Bonu State due to uh, the Boko Haram menace. And here this one says, security agents killing our members secretly, IPOB alleges. And seen here, COVID-19 as well. COVID-19, uh, FGOK's gradual reopening of schools. Curfew now between 12, 12 a.m. and 4 a.m. in Abuja, Lagos. Bandits kill 23, abduct 12 in Ninja. And uh, also here, the story in Edo State, uh, the election, uh, George withdraws from suit seeking disqualification of Ize Iyamu. International flight resumes, FG bans Air France others from Nigeria. And illegal construction, Lagos seals 16 buildings, serves three container terminals notice. And let's start a bit with the security issue uh, in, uh, in uh, Bornu State. We're seeing uh, time and time again, the government uh, makes statements saying that Boko Haram has been degraded. But then there are reports that come out, like this one by the Bornu speaker, lamenting that towns are no-go areas cause of the security threats. Uh, what's your commentary on this, uh, Mr. DG? Well, I think um, government is not quite 100% serious about tackling this um, security issue. Unfortunately, government is um, devoting energy to undeserving things. Like this IPOP now, I just hope that they won't turn this IPOP into another Boko Haram itself. I just hope they won't turn IPOP into a terrorist organization because when people are agitating genuinely based on marginalization, which is evident by the nepotistic act of this government, and you begin to push them to do what you begin to, you begin to terrorize them, you are molding them to become aggressive. That was what happened in Ogoni. No violent protests, government terrorized them, and at the end of the day, it turned into violence across the Niger Delta region. So we need to be careful and devote energy to the right places. Now, we need to tackle this Boko Haram issue and insecurity from so many perspectives. Human beings have wants and desires. These desires must be met to a reasonable extent. A situation whereby these people, there's no electricity, there's no road, there's no employment, there's no social incentives. You want food, you cannot get food. You want, you know, phone, ordinary phone, you cannot get phone. And these Boko Haram people are coming with little, little incentives. And when you are poor, your defense is weak. And they begin to lure people. So why won't people join them? And this Boko Haram people now comes again with an ideological perspective. And it's always very difficult to defeat ideological war. You need to come up with a conviction, serious conviction that no, this ideology is wrong. We are following the wrong ideology. So how do you convince people when you are not even bothering about their welfare at all? They will believe whatever they hear. So there are so many ways to fight this Boko Haram war, aside from just, you know, the military, equipping the military and all that, then you need to ask yourself, in developed nations, when monies are allocated to the security agencies, the um, response in terms of adequate security must show in the society. Now, the $1 billion that have been assigned to the military, what is the effect? What is the progress made. So for me, I don't think we are serious. You know, I, I usually say it is, you know, Nigerian government, successive government, not particular to this government. We are we don't have a serious government. Because you cannot say, okay, you want to tackle Boko Haram and you are just, you know, focusing on the military. Hmm. What about the social incentives? 
Okay, since, since, about... since we're talking on politics now, let's uh, touch a bit about the uh, upcoming Edo election. We see that the allegations and counter uh, allegations from both sides, the APC and the PDP, ahead of the polls. And uh, here we see that Edo Guba George withdraws from suit seeking disqualification of Ize Iyamu. And uh, what do you have to say about this and uh, generally well, the elections in Edo and Undo states as well? We have just well, less than uh, two minutes to wrap up, please. Okay, APC and PDP, to me, are best of the same feather. They deploy every practice to make sure they have their way. And that is why APC has accused the judge so that the case of Ize Yamu will be delayed for the election to pass by. And the action of the APC forming a parallel um, House of Assembly is a signal that Nigerians are yet to know. And that is that they may have perfected plan to force Ize Yamu on Edo people by fire by force. And if they eventually declare him the winner, at the end of the day, if they don't form that parallel house of assembly, they, um, that means that Ize Yamu will not have a legislature to work with. That is why they quickly form that parallel House of Assembly so that by the time they declare Ize Yamu the winner, he would have a legislature to work with. But the thing is that the interest of the Edo people must be held with high esteem. All right. In, yeah, in Nigeria. Okay. So, so let's 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 quickly the wrap up. In with... Nigeria, All what right. is the benefit of being a citizen? You do not give people light, electricity, and the only right, fundamental right that they have for them to vote in peace. You still deny them the opportunity to vote in peace. So I think for me, APC and PDP in Edo State are the same thing, and they are just fighting for power, ego, in a sense, society. Somebody like Adams or Shiomone, with all he said in 2016, will not have the infantry to come to Nigerians and campaign for Ise Yamu. And Obaseki too, in the same society, will not have the infantry to come and complain because the system is complaining about now. He benefited from it in 2016. All right, Mr. DG, we're well, really running power. out of so time. Shouldn't cry now. We're really running out of time, unfortunately, and we have just a few seconds to go through the Business Day newspaper. And it seems here that uh, uh, the stories here are focused on uh, positives here for Nigerian business. Uh, it says, export-led growth, crucial to fixing Nigeria's foreign exchange and job crisis. Exports-led growth, crucial to fixing Nigeria's foreign exchange and job crisis. And of course, travel and hospitality businesses to rebound as international flights resumes tomorrow. So what do you, what, what's your thoughts on exports, uh, you know, about it being a driver to fixing Nigeria's foreign exchange? Uh, quickly, in less than a minute, please. Well, um, it's true that exports um, led growth is crucial to fixing Nigerian um, forex and jobs. But at the same time, Nigeria will keep having this forex problem and job issue if we are not a producing economy. Nigeria has a lot of natural resources and human resources. We need to be a producing economy. If we are producing, the amount we are spending on forex will reduce. That will strengthen our Naira. How can we have petroleum for the past like 60 years and we don't have a functioning refinery and multinational corporation will take our oil at a cheap rate take it to their country, refine it, and sell it back to us at exorbitant prices. And we are complaining that we don't have jobs and our Naira is losing value. We know these problems. Why can't we fix it? Hmm. Indeed, food for thoughts here, uh, Omashala Deji. Thank you so much for joining us and Off the Press on The Breakfast. Thank you for having me. And the program continues right after this break. Do stay with us. <laughs>